Kevin Zinger. I'm the founder, lead inventor, uh, and CEO of Divergent Technologies and uh, Zinger Vehicles. It's great to be here today. Really what I'm doing is creating an end-to-end -end digital manufacturing system. So 15 years ago, uh, I went to set up uh, an EV car company and an EV battery company uh, that I had co-founded. And uh, you know, I found out when I tried to do it in the US that uh, the capital wasn't there and I ended up building these factories in China. And the one lesson I learned from doing it in China is they may do it more cost effectively, but they're using the same manufacturing processes, analog manufacturing processes that were created a hundred years ago. And I looked and said to myself, this is material, energy, and capital inefficient. And so how do you go from that analog system that requires a lot of capital for the tooling of a uh, given design for a car model and the capital for the fixturing of a given factory to a full digital system, like going from the printing press to Mac desktop publishing in one step. And so we created that system. And when you create a new system of designing and manufacturing and assembling something, it has a new architecture. And the car company is the natural uh, expression of what these tools allow humans to do. It allows you to architect something that has a very different product performance around a very different business model. And that's why Zinger Vehicles was created. The company was founded by myself as the first employee. Today it has about 230 scientists and engineers six and a half years later. And it's a process of designing a complete new system from a clean sheet of paper, inventing myself, but also having to go out and find experts, world-class engineers and scientists who could and were prepared to invent almost everything. So six and a half years later, 230 scientists and engineers, 500 plus uh, patents and not only a vehicles company, but as Aston Martin announced, we're going to be providing them with frames. And we have six major global OEMs that we're going to start shipping frames to. Raising money, starting a, a company, hiring people, and hundreds of inventions where you go to bed probably for the first five years, knowing that if you don't invent the next piece of that system, you know, you've plowed through hundreds of millions of dollars and, you know, five plus years of people's lives with the objective not met. I mean, right now we take a, you know, single gauge piece of sheet steel or aluminum and we stamp it, or we take a casting mold and we pour uh, molten metal into it. That is not a process that looks at a design space and across all of the engineering requirements, all of the manufacturing requirements, all of the assembly requirements, you use high performance computing and supercomputing to create a perfectly optimized structure. What that means is, and here's a simple example. Say you're looking at a beer can 50 years ago. It had a much thicker uh, gauge wall to it. It had a different tab to the can. It required 83 grams of aluminum. Iterative redesigns on even that si simple object over 50 years have reduced the material uh, that go into that can from 83 grams of aluminum to 12.7 grams of aluminum. That's using design as a way to make material and energy per product use case much more efficient. Now we have supercomputing to do that and machine learning. And we use that to create a perfectly optimized structure, which means you can dematerialize the largest products that we as consumers use, which are vehicles taking 20, 30, 40% of the mass out, meaning reducing material and energy requirements, uh, while maintaining that product 
usefulness. And that means that you're much more efficient with material and energy. That's the only way you create a survivable manufacturing system as we continue to add population and people continue to consume in a Western way, and that increases. And the second thing is you need to have materials that at the end of their life, instead of throwing them out, like that aluminum can, that aluminum can used to be all mined material. Today, it's 76% recycled. So the idea was to create a machine that both used high performance computing to dematerialize, make super efficient structures, and then have materials that at the end of their useful life could be reatomized, turned back into a printable powder and reprinted. Those are the two fundamental cores of any sustainable manufacturing system. And that's what Divergent Technologies created. Not remotely. So if you look at the different technology development roadmaps, whether it's World Economic Forum or Fraunhofer or other groups that look at where technology is going, where we are at today, they're projecting not to happen for another 15 years. We are with Aston Martin already announcing that we're shipping to a major auto brand, frames. That's not expected for another 15 years. It's already happened. Within the next few years, by 2025, we'll be supplying to major automotive uh, brands, tens of thousands of printed structures for vehicles. So. No, there's no one remotely doing what we're doing, and we're about to accelerate it. Well, you know, I'd start out with the caveats that I, I love all of my children equally. I love all of these parts equally. It's like trying to say to my daughter, you know, which, which part of me do you like best? My nose, my ears, my whatever. But I, what I would say is like this brake node, which is one of the first uh, functionally integrated parts that takes a brake caliper plus the, the knuckle of a suspension, combines those two into a perfectly optimized structure, reduces mass by over 40%, reduces the number of parts by over 90%, increases stiffness and looks cool as hell. That's a very groovy part.